Markets have been a little leery about the goings on in Europe. Here with his prognosis for the markets is Dennis Gartman. He's economist and editor of the Gartman Letter here uh, in the studio for a change. And uh, Dennis, good to, thanks, just, thanks for stopping by. You'll, you'll apparently say. let anybody in. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we keep the gates up. <laughs> All right. Okay. So what is going on here in the markets? I mean, you've seen this sell-off, and this is not the first sell-off we've seen in one. We've seen several, in fact. Yeah, you saw one last summer that was what seven percent in in, mm -hmm. in in size, and. Uh, I have to admit, that got me a little concerned then, but it's not gotten me as nearly as concerned as this decline has, because we are now following a 60% rally around the world. And what bothers me is that if you look at stock markets almost everywhere, they all retraced 50 to 60%, and they've all, every one of them has begun to falter. That's disconcerting. The, the decline that took place in, in, in July of last year was here in the United States, almost particularly. Mm -hmm. Now it's globally, and that, that's a cause of concern. I think, think there's more, something more serious than just a 7 to 10 percent decline going on. Driven by fundamentals or what? You know what? It, what's interesting about this is I've been in this market as long as I have. You find out that the fundamentals follow what the market does long after the market does it. Markets do a very good job of anticipating things. Market, the market turned up long before economic activity is getting, and it is in fact getting stronger. The market will turn down long before economic activity begins to turn lower. That's right. And yet at the same time, um, and when I, when I mean by fundamentals is of course what we're hearing about what's going on in Europe and yeah. with Greece and that sort of stuff. But um, I was talking with a Fitch analyst just, a, you know, just about half an hour ago who says, look, some of that, some of those fears are exaggerated at this point. I am not sure that the fears in Europe are, are exaggerated at all. For the first time in a long while, I think you have to be very concerned about the real efficacy of the European Union. I think at the edges, uh, making a, a rather strained metaphor, the cloth that is the European Union is, is, is tearing at the very edges. Greece is a marginal player. Let's not kid ourselves. This mm -hmm. is not Germany. This is not France. But if Greece is showing these sorts of problems, we know that Portugal's behind them. We know that Spain's behind that. We know that Italy's behind that. And if somebody comes in to bail out Greece, if I were Portugal, my hand is up saying, well, what about me? What about Italy? What about Spain? Can all of those countries be bailed out of their fiscally untoward circumstances? And my guess is probably not. But some might say then, okay, that's fair enough that there could be an impact there. But why would we? Why would it matter to us here in the U.S.? I mean, to put it in a very blatant way, why does it matter then? The world is so much smaller than it was when I got started in this business in the early 1970s. What happens in England back in the 70s took two days to get to us. Now what happens in England, what happens in Portugal, takes 30 seconds to get to us. Because it's what about we, confidence, right? It is Ultimately, about, it's about confidence. Ultimately, That's all markets that's are all about. It's about. about confidence, absolutely. And confidence, I think, is being broken. Hmm. Okay, well then given that, then what do you recommend? What do you buy? What do you sell? Uh, I think the first thing that you have to do is know that you don't want to be aggressively long. If you are aggressively long of stocks, I think you should become dramatically less long. Uh, for the inequities. average inequities, okay. yeah, absolutely. I think for the average investor, he can't go to the short side. Uh, I, as a as a hedge fund manager, can can go to that side. Today, it doesn't feel all that well, all that st solid because we're going to open up what eight tenths of a percent. Those things happen. It's turn around Tuesday. But if I were telling an individual what to do, I'd say, you've had a nice run. It's been a great 60% move from the March lows. You've not seen anything like this practically in your lifetime. Take some. Go to the sidelines. Take a deep breath. And don't be surprised if stock prices are down another 10 or 15% by the end of the summer. And you think that you would, and you would go long, continue to go long gold? I, I've been long gold for a long time, and, and I, I preface every statement, or I shouldn't say preface because we've already started it, I don't like myself when I'm bullish of gold. I don't like being bullish of gold. It, it, it means that you're, that you're expecting untoward, chaotic circumstances to prevail. That's not going to happen. But at this point, you have to own a little bit of gold. But you're long dollar, too. Uh, I am bullish of the U.S. dollar. I'm bullish of dollars, U.S. dollars, Canadian dollars, Australian dollars, New Zealand dollars. I think money is moving to dollars and is moving away from Europe. I think that's something that's really taking place. Not enough people have paid much attention to, and it's going to continue, I believe. Okay, well, some bets coming from Dennis Gartman. Thanks so much for joining us and uh, stopping by. Thanks for having me. Dennis, editor of the Gartman Letter.